Welcome back, baseball fans, 6972 Carryover League. Welcome to the desert in the National League Mountain. Uh, a series we saw before the All-Star break that was very competitive, went seven games. We're back again in a best of seven in the tournament. Uh, it turns out that they need seven games to distinguish first place from second place. Let's see what's happened. Portland opened the series in first place by a half game. But in game one, Las Vegas got the road win behind Blue Moon Odom, six to five. Close game, bullpen use, very tight back and forth seesaw affair. These two teams play competitive baseball. Portland's in first. Then, game number two, Portland wins 5-4. Another close game. Hoyt Wilhelm, an all-star, gets a save. And Portland's back to being in first by a half a game. Then a series goes to the desert. Ethiopia, Las Vegas, whatever. Game three. Vegas behind Tony, a rejuvenated Tony Cloninger that nobody wanted in the offseason draft for some reason. He found a spot in Vegas, and he's really... Playing well, pitching well, and he gets a 7-2 win, and we're right back to Las Vegas as a half a game in front. But then, for the first time in a while, the two teams will be separated by more than that, because it's Las Vegas. A 4-1 win. Ron Herbel, a relief starter, hasn't done much this year. Got some relief help by three relievers, and won 4-1. The Portland Bats have gone slightly cold. And Vegas now has a one and a half game lead and a chance to win game five, which I am playing here, and winning the up to seven, four games to one. So let's take a look at the overall standings. And you'll see that Portland, they were a half game up, now they're one and a half back, 18 and 17. Vegas is 19 and 15. Arizona and Colorado are just falling asleep at the bottom there. These two teams, it's Interesting baseball when you want to get rid of the superstars and you're scrapping, you're scrapping in the bullpen, scrapping on the bench, your defense, bunning, stealing bases. Scrappy baseball by both squads. Um, so instead of like one dominant team like we had last year in Colorado, we got two scrappy teams. Right now, though, Portland's in trouble. They got to uh, win this game, otherwise, they'll be sitting at 500. And teams like the Pittsburgh Pirates will take their playoff spot, or the St. Louis Cardinals, or the Phillies, or even the Marlins, or even the Astros and Giants and Dodgers. So, Portland, you don't want to, like, fall, to, fall another one, or it's going to get tough. And Vegas, wow, has a chance to be in first place by two and a half games going into the second round of the tournament. Today's starting pitchers... Ray Culp had a big year for Portland through a one-hitter earlier this year, and they need him. And Blue Moon Odom, acquired in a trade a couple years ago from the A's. Las Vegas had the rights to Vita Blue. They ended up letting those rights go rightfully to the Oakland A's, and the A's and Las Vegas picked up Blue Moon Odom and some other pitcher I can't recall right now. I think it was, I can't recall. Anyway, let's get started. Leading off for Portland, they shuffled their lineup. Frank Baker. We'll lead off at DH, 48, 1 to 14 is a base hit. Belanger, 1 9, is a walk. Two on, Tony Gonzalez, 65, short X. Good defense there. 2 e 19 is Kubiak, but it's a ground ball C. Couldn't get a glove on it, has to throw it to first. So the runners move up, second and third. Bob Montgomery put in the cleanup spot. 44 off of Odom, doesn't give up homers. Triple one to five, single dot dot is single dot dot, and Portland has an early lead. Rich Reese, 49, is a walk. The lineup changes have paid off. Alan Gallagher inserted into the lineup. Ball four, they're loaded, one out. Ken Boswell, 39. Let's take a look at Ken Boswell's card. This is his Met card of 71. Oddly enough, he gets lefties better than righties in this year. This is going to be a single, and the Portland Rosebuds keep rolling. They want to send this thing back to Portland and reclaim home field advantage. Byron Brown, 45. Blue Moon is collapsing in the first inning. It's a base hit to center field. Reese has scored. 
Gallagher is an 11 runner, will hold, leaving them loaded still with just one out for Ty Klein. 64, Klein bounces to short, and this is another ground ball C for Kubiak. Really puzzling defensive roles, no double plays off the 2E19. The ground ball C is really going to hurt here as another run will score. Second and third, two outs, and it's Frank Baker as they bat around. 2-10 is a K. Five runs in the first frame for Portland. Can Ray Colt make it stand up? Tommy Davis, 69, triple one and two, base it. No, it's triple. Rolled under the glove, all the way to the wall for Tommy Davis. All-star Tommy Davis. Ken Berry, a bunner. Have to bring it up in the first inning. 59, sack fly to center. And there goes Vegas on the board with a run. Art Shamsky, 57, single. Ron Hansen, another all-star. 2-7, single to right field. Shamsky holds the second. Two on, one out. John Bacabella, 53 off Culp. Left X, 3-14, Tony Gonzalez. And a single, not that. And here comes Vegas, folks. 5 nothing. forget it. Runners on the corners, one out, Steve Whitaker. 67 is a K. And with two outs, the original A-Rod. The original one bounces the second. And Boswell's a 3-18 defensively, and he makes the play. So, the rally stalls, but Vegas gets some of it back. And an exciting first inning, it's 5-2. All right, Mark Belanger, 36, center. Tony Gonzalez, 2-4, second. Bob Montgomery, 2-5, single. And Rich Reese, 1-6, is a K. Blue Moon had some time on the bench to talk to his pitching coach and got himself straightened out. So, nice inning there. Bottom of two, Ramon Webster, 1-7, single one, line out. Kubiak, 2-6 first. Tommy Davis, 1-4-K. Top of the third, Alan Gallagher, 1-12. Center B plus injury. Wow, that hurts. They inserted he was on the bench, and they got him in the lineup. And now he injures himself. So, to replace him at third base, it'll simply be Jerry Kenny. who go play center field or the outfield. Center field or third base, I should say. All right, Ken Boswell, 4-11, right X. Uh, Whitaker's out there, 3-13, he gets up a double. Byron Brown, 2-11, right? And with two outs, Ty Klein, 1-10, single one to seven, lines out. All right, bottom of three. Ken Berry, 1-6, triple, 1-4, base it. Down by three runs, let's see here. Art Shamsky, 2-5. Homer, 1-9, flies a left. Ron Hansen, 53, left X. Tony Gonzalez, a 3-14. And he makes a two-base error. A two-base error on Tony Gonzalez. Second and third for Bacabella. 48, sack fly to left. And with two outs and a man in second, it's Whitaker, 58, flies to right. All right, 5-3 in the fourth. Frank Baker, 2-5. Triple, 1-13 is a triple for Frank Baker. Let's take a look at his card. This is an outfielder uh, for the Indians in 69. Uh, we also have a Frank Baker who was an infielder for the Orioles and Yankees. So we call him Frank Baker, too, in the box. Uh, Lead-off triple, 5-3 game. They're going to bring the infield up. Mark Belanger. 3-6, center, center be question mark. Baker's a 14 runner. 14-15-16 against the zero arm. And he's thrown out on a 20. A big throw by Ken Berry. And that's a 9-9-2 double play. Wow. Tough break for the Portland squad. Tony Gonzalez, 2-7, first. 5-3, bottom of fourth. A-Rod, 68. Double one of four, base hit. Ramon Webster, 64, center. Kubiak, 6'10". Doesn't have power. That would have been a home run. It's single, not dot. 
Runners on the corners for Tommy Davis. Let's look at the All-Stars card here. Big year. He's hitting 370-something with this card. They got runners in the corners, one out. Um, with, uh, in a, with a two-run lead, they're going to play it back. Tommy Davis. 56 is another sack fly. And it's a 5-4 game. Vegas continues to chip away at that first inning deficit. That's Ken Berry. 2-5 short. All right, 5-4 in the fifth. Blue Moon against Bob Montgomery. 39 is a K. Rich Reese, 37, single on a one, line out on a two. That's a tough one. And Jerry Kenny, 38, is a grounder to short. Portland has gone cold again after the big first inning. You can feel them tightening up here. And uh, if Vegas is to rally, this would be a pretty important move in the National League standings for the uh, Sons of the Desert. Before we get to the bottom of the fifth, first let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Okay. Shamsky leads off in the fifth. 59. Bounce of the second. Ron Hansen. 3-6. Let's take a look at the Hansen card. He is an all-star as well. 3-6. Homer won a 14 fly ball, and he rolls the seven, and they've done it, folks. Took them five innings. Chipped away. That's what good, gritty teams do. They get two, and then one, one, and so far, one. We got a tie game. Bacabella, 35, one to 14, lines out on an 18. Steve Whitaker, 2-7 walk. A-Rod, the original. Unfiltered, unleaded. Diet. Uh, zero calories. 2-4 is a sky to center field. All right. 5-5 five, five in the sixth. Blue Mo Moon Odom survived that first inning. And a couple of hits. He's going to keep pitching. Boswell leads off. 1-8. We saw the card earlier for Ken Boswell. 1-8. Homer. 1-7. It's a double. Byron Brown, 69, center C. Ty Klein, 2-6 is a walk. Blue Moon Odom, he must have thrown a lot of pitches by this time. But he's their horse, he's their ace. The only guy who can pitch on three days rest, they'll ride him as long as they can. He's a starter eight. Frank Baker, two, 46. Here it is, a big Frank Baker, triple one to two, single not down in the Portland Rosebuds of reclaim the lead, six to five. All right, runners on the corners with Belanger. They're going to bring it up. 37, a clean single to right field. Frank Baker, a 14 runner. Whitaker's a plus one arm. He's going to try and go coast to coast with one out. Any advance is on a 10, so give it up for the Portland team and rallying here and being aggressive. They got runners on the corners. Both guys have speed, and they have two runs on the board, and Blue and Odom is really disappointed here. He's not broken, but he is. Put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 men on base in five and a third innings. They are going to bring it up for Tony Gonzalez. 35, single dot dot, Tony Gonzalez. And at a certain point, I just got to... Hmm. We're going to pitch to Montgomery with the infield up. Montgomery, 49's a walk, and I've had enough. I've had enough. Just not... Blue Moon's Day. Doesn't seem like he is going to put Las Vegas on the yellow brick road. Sorry about that, Blue Moon. I mean, it just, just didn't work out today. And we could use a lefty reliever. And it will be Ken Brett. Ken Brett. Down three runs with the bases loaded to one out. Ken Brett in the sixth against the surging Rosebuds. Rich Reese. Let's see here. I'm going to play it back. Put the bases loaded. 49, second C. Oops, that wasn't the right move. And it's 9 to 5. Second and third now for Jerry Kenny. 45, short X. This is Kubiak, 2E19. Makes the play. Well, it's four run lead. Uh, this team doesn't. Uh, you know, you saw what happened once it, when they were down five. Now they're down four. So, Ray Culp 
give up the five runs. But he's been a horse this year for Portland. The difference with Portland and the uh, Vegas team, all their starters can pitch on three days rest. So, Ramon Webster to make up for a weak Portland bullpen. Ramon Webster leads it off. 111 pops the first. Kubiak, 1-4 is a walk. Tommy Davis, 1-3 is a 6-4, three double play. That was big, big move there. All right, seventh inning. Ken Boswell, this time against a lefty. 2-9 short. Byron Brown, 5-11. Pitcher X. Brett is a E0, so I don't throw off for the E0s. Home teams don't. And Ty Klein will stay in the game because of his defense in center field. 2-8 is a line of first. Okay. Stretch time here in Vegas. Sons of the Desert. We are listening to some Ethiopian magic from the 70s. Ayulu Mesfin, the pharaoh in the desert of Ethiopia in the 1970s uh, funk scene. These guys are just bumping this. Man, good stuff. All right, bottom of the seventh. Uh, Culp, giving up five runs, but they got a shaky bullpen. Uh, and he is a star of seven. You may have to break Culp to get him out of this one. Ken Berry, 62, right. Art Shamsky, 47, is a walk. Ron Hansen, homered last time. 6-10, 1 to 17 off the Culp card. He rolls an 18, which is a double. Kind of disappointing, but the inning's still going. Second and third, Shamsky will not get thrown out the plate here, and they really need to score these runs. And they want to break Culp right now with Bacabella. With a four run lead, they're going to play back. For Bacabella comes through with a single dot on his card. And it's 9 to 6. And that's it. Ray Culp. He pitches um, six and a third innings. Responsible for the two runners, can't lose. Three run lead. Oh boy. The problem with Portland is that their lefties have been not very good this year. Jerry Erigo and Fred Norman, both balloonish ERAs. And I think they're going to go with Strohmeyer. John Strohmeyer's coming on in the seventh inning, another right hander, but he's good against lefties. And but Vegas will have Whitaker, A Rod, and then Webster Kubiak, three out of four lefties. So it's Steve Whitaker with runners on the corners, playing back with a three run lead and one out. Pitched Steve Whitaker. 5'11 off Strohmeyer, right X. Right fielder is Byron Brown. Who is he? Byron is a 3'11 in right field. This could be trouble. And it is a double. Byron could not get the right angle on that ball. It goes cutting into the corner for a double. Bacabella holds it third. We got a 9 7 game with runners in scoring position, folks. I'm telling you, this Vegas squad does not give up. Highly entertaining series. And again, Portland trying to protect the lead. Strohmeyer against the original A-Rod, playing back with a two-run lead. The pitch to A-Rod, 46, singles off Strohmeyer. And it's nine to eight. And you got runners in the corners with one out, but you got two lefties. They're gonna bring the infield up now. Prevent the tie run from scoring. Ramon Webster is the batter. The pitch. 69. He walks him. Oh, my goodness. strohmeyer has got nothing. Coming out of the pen. And once again, Porton's tightening up. <laughs> my goodness. 5 nothing lead and then a 9-5 lead. And here we go again. Bases loaded. One out for Ted Kubiak, who's had some dubious fielding plays today. The 249 <laughs> hitting Kubiak. With the infield up. The pitch to Ted. 37 is a K. He strikes out. And with two outs, oh my, it's Tommy Davis. Oh boy, what are we going to do with this guy? Well, do we dare ask Hoyt Wilhelm, who's a relief two, 
but for most of his career could pitch three innings in relief. Do we dare ask Hoyt Wilhelm to get a two, a seven out save? Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do it, folks. Hardly ever do something like this. But Hoyt Wilhelm, the all-star acquired in the offseason from California, didn't think it was going to mount to much. And it's mounted to a lot. He's gone to the All-Star game, leads the National League in saves, and has kept Portland uh, protecting leads late in games and got them to where they're at. Strohmeyer can only get one out. And here he is, folks. Hoyt Wilhelm in the seventh against Tommy Davis with the infield back and the bases loaded in a 9-8 game. The pitch to Tommy Davis. One, five! <laughs> Tommy Davis, the all-star homer, one, two, eleven, it is gone! Holy smokes! My goodness! It's going bananas here in the desert. The salami, a four-run dinger. Is this the team of density? <laughs> 12 to 9. Hoyt Wilhelm stares in disbelief at the outfield wall as that fly ball was went over it. All right, Ken Berry. 37 is a K. And a clearly deflated Portland team. Now six outs away from losing the series in their hold on first place. Ken Brett. He will come out after doing a pretty decent job for uh, inning and two-thirds. And they will turn it over to Hambright, Roger Hambright with a three-run lead in the eighth inning. Good old Roger. All right, does Portland fold up or do they rally? It's back to Frank Baker, who is three for four today, leading off in the eighth. Frank Baker, two, the pitch, two-two, fouls the catcher. Mark Belanger, he's been on twice. 310, bounces a short. And with two outs, it's Tony Gonzalez. 38, skies the center field. Wow, Las Vegas. My goodness. All right, bottom of the eighth. Art Shamsky will lead it off. 3-6, take a look at Art Shamsky's card. My goodness, they are pouring it on, folks. 13-9, Lost Vegas. Lost wages. My goodness, the new stars of the Mountain Division. Ron Hansen, two sevens, a single. Oh, they're beating up Wilhelm, too. It just makes it even worse. All right, running for Ron Hansen. They're going to bring their defense in, too, to make it more devastating. Colin's going to play second base for Hansen. He's a 2-E-6. Bacabella. 2-2 Two -two pops the second. And Whitaker. 6-11. Pitcher X. Hoyt's an E-22. And he makes the play. And they also can bring in Jeff Torborg to catch. Ramon Webster. They got all their defense. They have a four-run lead. They got Roger Hambright and Jim Rowland to finish this one out. And they are going to go... To their closer, Jim Rowland, with a four-run lead in the ninth inning. Whew. And the rest of the National League is kind of, kind of glad because it, you know, if you get, if both these teams make the playoffs, you're gonna prevent a very good National League team, traditional National League team, from making the playoffs. So maybe the best scenario is for one of these teams, Las Vegas, to be the, win the division and for Portland to fade away. That clearly could be what the rest of the National League is hoping. That's how you get a, a Pittsburgh or a San Francisco or St. Louis or Houston gets that extra playoff spot. All right, enough of this already. Ninth inning, batting for Bob Montgomery. Bob Barton will pinch it. The pitch to Bob Barton. 1-3 is a sky to center field. Rich Reese. 45 is a single, and they're still breathing. Jerry Kenny. 48 is a K off the rolling card. And with two outs, it's Boswell. 
the pitch to Ken Boswell. 45 is a single. Game still going on. Two on, two outs in the ninth. And it's Byron Brown. Let's take a look at Byron here. Plenty of power, as you can see, with two on and two outs in the ninth inning. The pitch to Byron Brown. 2-8 is ball four. And just like that, <laughs> this is great. Oh, this sets up a fantastic finish here. So batting for Ty Klein. <laughs> Pinch hitting for Ty Klein, we have Ken the Hawk Harrelson. Hmm, an interesting move in the offseason. He led the America League in RBI in 1968 with the Red Sox and then got traded to Cleveland in 69. And then uh, Portland uh, got him in the expansion draft. And the uh, Ken Harrelson with the bases loaded and two outs in the top of the ninth against Jim Rowland. A 1-5 or 4-4. Four, four, Ties it at 13. The pitch to Ken Harrelson. 4-10 misses the column. Skies to center X. And guess what, folks? Your center fielder, Ken Barry, is a 1-E-0 in center field. So I don't have to roll a 20-sided dice. It is over. Skies to center. It's all over in Vegas. Wow. We have a new star in the Mountain Division to root for this year. Cinderella <laughs> is in the uh, casinos this year. She's, I don't know what she's doing. She's playing slots, she's doing all sorts of crazy things, stuff. But that's where Cinderella is, folks. She's in the desert. Jim Rowland uh, makes it interesting in the ninth. Two hits a walk and a K. Hambright, three up and three down in the eighth. The Spaceman gets the win. He was on the mound when they made the comeback. RR, I'd say Reese. Wow, five up and five down for Ken Brett. Really, once they got Blue Moon Odom out of the game, Vegas really took over. Blue Moon was horrible. Five and a third innings, 11 hits, nine runs, all were earned. Clearly, thinking he would turn it around and anchor the, the team. Turns out the team didn't need his anchoring. Their bullpen and their and the rest of their offense figured it all out. All right. And it was Hoyt Wilhelm who board the, made the mistake here. The big home run. Three hits, two runs, and a K. Poor old John Strohmeyer. He gets charged with a loss. Wow. So Strohmeyer came in to face Steve Whitaker. All his, uh, th all three runners he put on scored. Two hits, three runs, a walk, and a K. And Ray Culp just ran out of gas in the seventh. They really needed him to keep going because the Portland's had a shaky bullpen besides Hoyt Wilhelm. And uh, they asked Hoyt. Hoyt wasn't ready. He normally comes on in the ninth inning. He was like hanging out in the clubhouse and they said, we need you in the seventh inning and it just did not work out. Uh, six and third for Culp, 10 hits, eight runs, but you had some unearned runs in, tossed in here. Seven are earned, but three of those were his bullpen letting his inherited runner score with a big lead. Three walks. And two strikeouts. 1009 0108. 13-15-913. 6-4-4-4. So Portland put 19 men on base and Vegas put 19 men on base, but you can see that one team played better baseball. That was game five. And we'll do the composite box and see what's happening in the standings. I think the Pittsburgh Pirates are doing cartwheels because now they see a path to the playoffs. They're, they're going to eliminate. They're, not, they're going to knock Portland out of the playoffs. And once the Pittsburgh Pirates get into the playoffs, look out. So 
Portland falls to 18 and 18. That's not very good. Hitting 282 with a 409 ERA. Hoyt Wilhelm's 101 with eight saves. And Las Vegas is 20 and 15. Hitting 281 with a 407 ERA. I mean, almost identical numbers between the two teams. But Vegas, they actually won the uh, series before the All-Star game, four games to three. So head-to-head, -head, Vegas is eight wins and four losses against Portland. So clearly, they've done what they've needed to do to win this division. So, as you can see over here, Vegas is in first. Portland is now two and a half back, and Arizona and the Rockies aren't close enough. So unless Las Vegas collapses in the next two rounds of the tournament, they most likely will win the National League Mountain. That's it today from the desert, the parched desert. Hope you've enjoyed the game. We'll see you next time.